Welcome back from Murph 2019. We're here at the C C C Science, C Science Labs booth. Uh, you guys are showing off a new machine. Yeah. But first, uh, thank you to Pusa Research for sponsoring my trip to MIRF 2019. Uh, they're showing off the SL1 and the CW1 cleaning and hardening curing station. Uh, the idea is to make resin printing a lot more accessible and to get you know, more people onto that high detail way of printing stuff. Uh, check them out at the link below. But yeah, Hello. I, I've, I've got the mail one. This is the uh, long mill. Yeah. It looks quite different. What's new? Well, uh, as you can see, it is a much larger machine. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> um, we, we, we've been working on the design for this machine for about a year now. Um, after we had so much feedback about the Mill 1 design, people really liked the fact that we're using the simple rail design um, in order to make it, the build simpler, but also sourcing the parts if they want to make it themselves. And so we decided we wanted to make a larger volume. This is actually the medium size machine. It has a cutting area of 12 by 30 inches. Can you do that in metric? Um, in metric is... Okay, let, let, let's do it like this. I'll put the metric dimensions on screen yeah. right here. I'm actually Canadian, so I should know that. You should know that. But everyone asks me in inches, so I just know it in inches. No, okay, no. but it's 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 kind of large, okay, right? It's, yeah, so it the, is way larger. This is the medium size one, and the, the full size one, it's two and a half by two and a half feet, which is like a meter by meter-ish, right? No. No. But... Um, the, the, the main improvements that we made on the machine other than, you know, the size increase is we, we jumped from NEMA 17s to NEMA 23s. Once again, we're lead screw driven on all axes. And, uh, but you have new anti-backlash nuts in there. That was one of yeah. the problems on the, on the middle one that I had with it. Yeah, yeah. So we've upgraded to these Delrin anti-backlash nuts. And those are, those are hard uh, backlash nuts, which means that instead of relying on the spring, you can use a screw to tighten it down and pick up any of the slack as it develops. And yeah, overall, this is also a way more rigid machine. I mean, the, the uh, C-beam is a lot thicker. And also I'm seeing you've got some supports on the Y-axis in this case. So this is technically a supported rail. Yeah. And you are going for aluminum, actually. Yeah, yeah, the mill can go for aluminum and other soft metals pretty easily. Um, we've been running tests on it. Our other beta testers have cut aluminum, copper, brass, stuff like that. Copper, even copper, is pretty pretty taxing. Yeah, copper is pretty taxing. Um, you know, you really have to make sure you're taking your time with things like copper because it will heat up pretty quickly. Um, but because the machine is so rigid, it can push through the material fast enough. Um, it can maintain the proper chip ejection to carry the heat away and keep the base material uh, cool. Which is pretty important. I mean, f for something like aluminum, where, where you get uh, well chip weld and all that stuff. You've also got the, um, the linear rails for the Z-axis. I guess that's just yeah. to save space, right? Yeah, it saves space. It reduces the moment arm, so you get a more rigid uh, Z-axis assembly. So the, the guide rails are also nice because... Um, you know, this is kind of the last bit of separation from the base. And so using something like the extruded aluminum or any other profile and thickening the Z-axis would, would take away from the rigidity of the design. Yeah. Okay, so this machine is on Kickstarter right now. It's been on Kickstarter for four days at the time this is published. It's going to be seven days or something. Yeah. Um, you've got the prices and the prices are pretty competitive. Can you actually, can you actually build the machine for what you're selling them for? Yeah, 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 we can. Um, you know, we, we've done manufacturing of our Mill 1 machines for quite a while now. We do a lot of the manufacturing local to our area. So we're in the Kitchener-Waterloo area and we, we have our manufacturers in the area around us. And they're able to do, like, we're, we basically use those numbers in order to calculate kind of the bill of materials behind this build. And so, you know... When you take a look at the machine, you can kind of see how we're actually achieving that price. We spend a lot of time simplifying the design down to its core components, and it's not easy to do. It's easy to throw parts at something until it works, right? But it's not good engineering practice. 
Um, so we take a long time to make sure that we're only adding in the parts we need and that every single part you usually will have um, three or four individual functions, ideally, instead of just performing one. So, so it's all about efficiency of design, right? The way you're shipping this is actually also you know, a bit smarter than just putting this in a crate and then plopping it yeah. you know, on, on a container. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we, we don't want to ship you the base because you can get that from any hardware store. Um, so we're just gonna taking we're just taking all of the rails and kind of packing it into a kind of a tube shape like a, a long rectangular box so we can pick it up and ship it around the world. We don't want to add too much shipping cost on your end if you can just go to your hardware store. You're gonna want to buy materials that you cut out on the machine anyway. So my, why just well make it all in one trip, right? Exactly. So that's available on Kickstarter. One other thing that you were, were telling me about was uh, CamLab, which is yeah. your own software that you're developing for, I guess, your machines. But it's, it's yeah. something that other people can use as well. Yeah, yeah. So I've been working on the development of CamLab. It's a, it's a browser-based cam program for 3D models. It's really nifty because um, the, the whole purpose behind the design is... Um, there's quite a few online or browser-based CAM programs for like line drawings, like DXFs and, SF and SVG import, um, but less of a variety for, for 3D models. Um, I made it so that there's, it's very simple to pick it up and use it, and I also made it compatible for you know, Xcarve, Shapeoko, all of the other like Gerbil and other Linux, like Linux CNC and stuff based uh, machines. So if anyone has any requests for a machine profile, I can add it in. Um, but right now it works with quite a variety of the hobbyist level machines. Yeah. Um, speaking of Gerbil, one thing that we skipped over with this one, um, the original Mill 1 was using like the Arduino CNC shield with just yeah. the, the small drivers. You, you're doing something different here. It's a bit of a beefier box. Yes. Uh, and you did mention you got the NEMA 23. So what's, yeah. what's in there? Yeah, so we got the TB6600 T4 drive. Standard Toshiba drivers, but the V4, that's, that's different. The, it's, it's, it's a T4. So, so the, this board specifically combines four drivers together. So it makes it a more efficient package. And we found that it also works well in terms of like the internal wiring and how well it controls the motors. Um, so that comes in its own package, takes up about half the box, and then we got an Arduino in there to run the logic behind it. Yeah. So it's still running Gerbil, essentially. Yeah, it's still running Gerbil. You still plug your computer in, uh, run like a universal G-code sender, for example, or other uh, G-code file sender, but that's the most popular one. Um, and that's your interface to the machine in order to communicate the file that you're cutting and also to keep track of cutting progress, stuff like that. And I guess one last thing on tools. So I, I see you're still rocking the Makita, what is the 701 or something or whatever yeah, it's called? The MT701. We kept on it with this uh, machine here because first of all, the tool life is very good. The, the, these routers, these trim routers last a long time. We've actually been running this one for two years straight. And we've got feedback from other like woodworkers who have had their trim routers and they've used them for seven years, eight years straight. Um, on top, not, not non-stop, but yeah, like not that. obviously not non-stop, but um, yeah, it's a very it's a very solid piece of machinery. Uh, the nice thing about it is that we're trying to make these machines uh, very approachable, right? And so, even though it can be a potential platform that you can build a, a spindle onto and then at, incorporate spindle control. Um, for some individuals, like for example, for your average woodworker who doesn't want to be going into like mains electronics, like wiring, for example, you can you can basically just slap the the trim router on there. It's got its own speed control. It plugs into the wall, and you can run it and cut whatever you, you want. And plus, with with this size tool, I like can really going to be running like the really fine. Uh, one eighth inch engravers or something. It's usually going to be a, a larger tool that hogs out more material, right? Yeah, yeah. Like like on the mill one, you're only going to be cutting smaller detailed pieces because the bed is so much smaller, right? Uh, for this machine, you know, if you if you're looking at the full size machine, which most people are, you, you're going to be using the quarter inch call it to the best that, that you can. Uh, you're going to be hogging out material as quickly as possible because you got such a large stock, right? And so uh, it has a much better use case in that area. 
Um, and also the Makita has a really great uh, speed, spindle speed uh, range from 10,000 to 30,000 RPM. So um, you can get, you can, you're able to cut a wide variety of materials um, anywhere from the softer metals and the, to the soft woods and the hardwoods. Um, and you were asking about doing PCB cutting on yeah, this well, machine as well. I, I, I do want to see the PCB that you'd cut on this size of a machine. That would be <laughs> pretty insane. But yeah, could it, could it do it? Yeah, yeah, I totally believe it can. I mean, this is a more accurate and more precise machine than the Mill 1. And you got the Mill 1 working, so... Kind of, yeah. I, I had to, you know, step back on what I was expecting. But yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think... You, you definitely not have too much of an issue getting it to work on here. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's the same issue of wanting to make sure you've got a reasonable amount of bed leveling or probing in order to make sure you can cut the material flat. But it's a it's a, it's one of those processes where you know if you're looking to do strictly PCB cutting, I would rather recommend that you get a machine built specifically for it. But as a, as a mul like if you're considering doing mostly woodworking or a little bit of metal cutting thrown in, and occasionally you'd like to do some PCB milling, then, it, then it'll work fine for those applications. So the, the smallest uh, long mill, which is not going to be a long mill, it's going to be a square mill, uh, is going to be that 12 by 12 inch size, which is 30 yeah. centimeters. Uh, does the mill one still have a reason to exist, or is, is that getting upgraded? What's, what's happening with that? Um, we're going to be upgrading the, the, the design of the mill one a bit so that it's a bit tougher. In my opinion, it still has a place because it, it is semi-enclosed, which is a decent feature. Um, and also, even though the 12 by 12 is a quite affordable price, the like like this it starts at 745 US. By the way, is that going to be the prices you're also going to be selling it once the Kickstarter is over, or are going to are prices going to go up? We're expecting the price is going to go up um, by maybe about $100. Um, so we're going to have to see um, how the manufacturing goes and whatnot. I remember when we, when we originally had the Mill 1 on Kickstarter, um, the Kickstarter price ended up being the final price of the machine. So, but right now we're focusing on making sure that we can make the machine as good as possible and get it to our Kickstarter backers uh, on time. which. I mean, our past Kickstarter, we got them to our backers earlier than we told them we were, they were going to be getting their machines. So they were very happy about that. Yeah, but, I mean, usually I don't recommend Kickstarters. I'm not going to recommend your Kickstarter either. But it, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing you guys manage to deliver the mill one, and it's a decent product. I'll be with a bit of uh, room for improvement. Right. Um, but yeah, if, if I go over here, this is, uh, this yeah, is a different class of machine. I mean, if I... Yeah, you got to hold it down because you can see the, the bed is actually moving here. So this is, you know, you can't really compare it with the Mill 1. It is a, a completely different type of product. So, all right. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we, we're doing oh, fist. Right. I, I, did, I did a handshake with Slice. Uh, I, I messed up on that. But oh, yeah, right. fist, fist bumps here only. Um, but yeah, best of luck. And uh, looking, looking forward to, to what you guys do next. Yeah, yeah. Very exciting. Thank you.